Hi everyone and welcome to the Anima Maestro figure video series. In this first video we're gonna look at the design of my animatronic from head to feet. We're gonna talk about eye mechanism, hand mechanism, steward platform, DC and servo motors, gears and much more. Welcome to Anima Maestro. Hi everyone and welcome again to the channel. Welcome to this brand new video series that is called the Anima Maestro figure. So in this video series, uh, we're gonna look at the design of my animatronic figure and the various mechanisms that I chose uh, to articulate the figure. We're gonna look at the uh, motors and the hardware component selection. We're gonna see how I use 3D printing to fabricate uh, all the parts. And of course, we're gonna see how I assemble the parts and test them and uh, see the animatronic come to life. So in this first video, we're gonna go back in time and take a look at how my project started about uh, 10 years ago. So uh, at the time I wanted to build uh, an animatronic hand uh, using a pretty common uh, design. Uh, each finger has its own motor and uh, the motor pulls a string that bends the three joints of each finger and uh, when the string is released uh, an elastic or a spring brings the finger back. So uh, that's the mechanism I chose for the hand. Um, while doing my research, I found these uh, tiny little DC geared motors uh, that I thought were just the perfect size uh, for this project. So uh, choosing these motors for the hand uh, led me to uh, decide that my animatronic would be uh, about three feet tall, which is about uh, half the size of a full grown man. So uh, that's how I chose the scale for my animatronic. After building the hands, uh, I started building the arms. So uh, for the arm, I needed uh, one articulation uh, to bend the elbow, as well as three articulations uh, to rotate the wrist in all three directions. One thing that I was pretty sure about when I started this project was that I didn't want to use pre-built uh, RC servo motors, but instead I wanted to build my own. So what it meant is that for each articulation, uh, I would need a DC motor as well as a position sensor and some electronics uh, to control the motors. So if you want to learn more about the electronic circuits that, it, that is needed to control servo motors, take a look at my Anima Maestro unit series. Uh, this is a video series series where I show the, the printed circuit board PCB that I design and develop to control servo motors. The next thing that I built for my animatronic at the time were the shoulders. So for the shoulders, I decided that I would have uh, two axes of rotation, uh, one axis to uh, move the arm forward and backward, and one axis to lift the arm up and down. To power the shoulders as well as the arms, uh, I had found those uh, little geared motors uh, that are really interesting. Uh, they come in various uh, current and voltage ratings as well as different gear ratios uh, to provide either more speed or more torque. So uh, given the size and uh, the power, uh, I thought those little motors would be perfect. So as you can see, I was able to build a pretty satisfying prototypes for the shoulders as well as the hand of my animatronic. And uh, as you can see, at the time I had chosen balsa wood as the main material for my animatronic. Uh, balsa wood is a type of wood that is pretty, pretty light and that is mostly used uh, to build RC planes. Um, but when I started testing my whole uh, arm assembly, uh, I quickly realized that that type of material would not be strong enough for my animatronic. So a few years passed and uh, 3D printing technology was gaining a lot of momentum and I started to get in interested in that technology and although at the time I was not ready to buy a 3D printer right away, uh, I was ready to start learning how to modelize things into uh, 3D CAD applications. So at the time I chose uh, Autodesk uh, 123D Design, uh, which is the ancestor of uh, Fusion 360. So at the time I started to uh, build uh, and design my animatronic using that software. Uh, at the time I started with the eyes because I told myself if I'm able to pull it off uh, in 3D and modelize the eyes and eyelids the way I imagined them, uh, then I would be able to uh, perhaps do the whole animatronic using 3D printing. So that's how I started. 
So for the eyelids, I came up with this design that you can see here with uh, the two pieces sliding into one another, which is really easy to assemble. And the points uh, where the eyelids slide into one another, they become the pivot point around which the eyelids can rotate. So uh, once uh, I uh, saw that I could uh, make it work, uh, at least in the 3D CAD, I thought, okay, I, I think I'm good and I'm going to be able to design the whole figure. So to help me design the shape of my figure, I looked online and found two images of a male body, one being the front view and the other one being the side view. Uh, I then processed those two images uh, to turn them into uh, black silhouettes. I could then convert these images into SVG. So SVGs are uh, vectorial images that I could then import into 1-2-3D design and uh, convert them into sketches uh, that would then become my reference to help me design my figure. So to help me with the measurements of uh, all the parts of my animatronic, I found these uh, drawings online that I, I thought were really useful, but I also found this tool online that is really nice. Uh, in the tool you can enter the height of the figure that you are trying to uh, design and the program uh, then tells you all the measurements of all the body parts, you know, the head, torso, legs, arms, everything. So uh, that was really helpful uh, for me uh, when designing my animatronic in the 3D CAD software. So this is how I started to modelize my animatronic in 3D. Uh, at first using really basic shapes and uh, slowly refining them over time. The first things that I started designing uh, were the legs and hips mechanisms. And uh, for the legs and hips, uh, there were three things that I really wanted my animatronic to be able to do. Uh, the first thing was that I really wanted the figure to be able to sit down uh, the second thing, if possible, uh, I really wanted the figure to be able to squat. Uh, and uh, finally, the third thing I wanted my animatronic to do was uh, to be able to sway from uh, side to side. So uh, those three things that I wanted to achieve uh, really helped me figure out, you know, how I would design the mechanisms. So to be able to sit, uh, the animatronic needed uh, articulations at the knees as well as at the hips. And uh, to be able to squat, I also needed uh, articulations at the ankles. And to be able to sway from side to side, since I didn't have enough room at the ankles uh, to add extra motors, I, did, I came up with this idea of having an extra DC motor at the hips level that would slowly rotate the legs, uh, thus moving the hips slowly from side to side. And that's how I could achieve that movement. So that's how I started to design the legs and hips of my animatronic using DC motors, plastic chains, as well as 3D printed gears. Today in Fusion 360, uh, you can find a built-in tool to help you uh, design gears in 3D. But uh, back then when I started to design my animatronic, I didn't have such a tool. So I found this gear generator online that was really useful. Uh, you can enter all the specifications uh, of your gears. You can then save them as 3D models and then import those models into your 3D CAD application. For all the DC motors that I needed for this project, as well as uh, plastic chains and ball bearings and uh, various other hardware, I went to online stores. All of these uh, online stores uh, will provide a detailed data sheet for all the hardware. Uh, and most of the time, they will also provide uh, actual 3D models uh, that you can download and then import uh, into uh, your 3D CAD application. So uh, that's what I did for most of uh, the hardware that I used for this project. So using all these tools, I was able to modelize uh, the thighs and hips of my animatronic. And after a few iterations, I was pretty satisfied uh, with the design. So I moved on to design the torso. So for the torso, I decided that I would include uh, three axes of rotations in uh, pitch, roll and yaw. So for the pitch and roll, I decided to use uh, DC motors with levers uh, to uh, rotate the platform in those two axes. And for the yaw, I decided to use a DC motor with a plastic chain as well as 3D printed gears uh, to achieve that rotation. Of course, along the way, I kept referring to my two silhouette sketches uh, to help me keep the shape of the animatronic the way I intended. 
So when the design of the torso was completed, uh, I set out to design the shoulders, arms and hands of my animatronic. Uh, so I basically started with the same concepts uh, that I had when I created my balsa wood prototype, uh, making some adjustments and improvements along the way. So in the end, each arm assembly ended up having three axes of rotation at the shoulder, one articulation at the elbow and three axes of rotation at the wrist. Uh, for the hand, the index, major and thumb each had their own motor and the annular and pinky shared one motor together. Then came the time to design the neck and head of my animatronic. Uh, for the head, given the two sketches that I had, uh, I quickly realized that it would be really tough uh, to modelize the head as a 3D uh, object. So uh, I just uh, started uh, basically with the two sketches, uh, made two plates out of them, and that became the basis for the design of the head. For the neck, I could have used uh, the same type of mechanisms that I had used for the torso. Uh, you know, one motor uh, to give me rotation in yaw and two other motors uh, to move a platform giving me rotation in pitch and roll. Um, but for my animatronic, I wanted to uh, push the thing, you know, and go one step further. And uh, I decided that I would use a Stuart platform. Uh, I was always uh, interested by Stuart platforms and uh, wanted to learn how they work and design my own. And if you don't know what is a Stuart platform, uh, they are most famous uh, for their use in uh, flight simulators. As you can see here, uh, that's the system uh, with six degrees of freedom uh, that allows for the three rotations that I mentioned, uh, as well as three translations along the X, Y and Z axis. So uh, that's what I chose uh, for my animatronic and I started to design uh, the neck using a steward platform. While researching steward platforms online, uh, I came across that little tool here that demonstrates uh, the code required uh, to control the six movements of a steward platform. So uh, if you are interested to learn more about that, you can take a look at my Anima Maestro Composer video series uh, in which I talk about the animation application that I developed, uh, which includes a steward platform controller. Finally, for the head of my animatronic, uh, I really wanted uh, each of the eyes, uh, eyelids and eyebrows to move independently. And uh, I also wanted movements for the jaw and lips. So uh, if you include the six motors that were required for the neck, uh, that quickly added up to 21 motors required uh, to move the neck and head uh, the way I wanted. And uh, given the space constraints uh, of both the neck and head, I decided that for these two, I would use actual RC servo motors. So uh, while browsing for servos, uh, I came across those tiny little servo motors that I find uh, really cute and perfect for the head. And uh, I also uh, found these ones uh, that are just a bit bigger, but with more torque uh, and decided to use them for the neck. So after I successfully fitted all the required motors into my figure's head, uh, I was able to complete the cranium uh, using simple spherical and cylindrical shapes. And after many months of design, uh, there it was. The animatronic uh, that I had in my head now existed virtually in 3D. Uh, and uh, I was really pleased uh, with the result. Uh, later on, I migrated uh, the whole design into Fusion 360 uh, and uh, this is the application that I still use to this date. A few years later, uh, I finally bought my first 3D printer and uh, started printing some parts to see uh, what kind of results uh, that I could achieve. So uh, here you can see the first prototype of eyelids and uh, eyeball that I printed. And uh, as you can see, it turned out pretty good. So at that point, I was really satisfied and I thought, OK, I can go ahead and uh, start building the animatronic. So in the next videos of this series, uh, I'll bring you along uh, through all the steps that are needed to bring this animatronic to life. So uh, in each episode, uh, we'll look at uh, some 3D model fine tuning. We'll see the 3D printing of the parts. Uh, we'll talk about uh, selection of the motors and uh, hardware components. And uh, we'll also uh, look at the actual uh, assembly of each body part. And uh, obviously we'll look at the testing and uh, start seeing the animatronic to life. 
So I'm really excited to share all of this with you. I really hope that you'll join me. I really hope that you'll subscribe and turn on the notification bell below uh, to be sure not to miss my upcoming videos. Uh, meanwhile, I would really be interested to know uh, what part of my animatronic interests you the most or uh, really if you have any questions about the mechanisms or choices that I made, please write some comments below and I'll answer them. And until next time, keep creating. Hi everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button below. And if you want to learn more about my animatronic project, please consider subscribing and also turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that I upload. Meanwhile, you can take a look at these videos and until next time, keep creating!